Hi, I'm Steven, and I'm a level one chef. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Saul, I've been a professional chef for the past 20 years. My hot chocolate is inspired by my sister's recipe that she would make at Christmas. So sis, I'm gonna do my best. Don't make me hear it at Christmas. Today I am making a hot chocolate that is thick, rich, and it's got some booze in it, because why not? Today I'm making a Mexican hot chocolate, AKA champurrado. I'm gonna make my own almond milk, and I'm going to top it up with some churros. Do I need to tell you it's gonna be delicious? All right, let's get started with the chocolate. We're gonna start with the hot cocoa powder. This is the most important part of the entire recipe. Without this, you're just drinking hot milk. Now, I think using real chocolate is the way to go, and when you couple it with some cocoa powder, the whole thing is just gonna be next level. And today, I've got some high-quality, semi-sweet dark chocolate. The Mexican chocolate that I'm using today is Ibarra, straight from Guadalajara, Jalisco. The difference between this chocolate and the other chocolates, this one has like a granulated sugar, it has a cinnamon in it, and this is how you break it apart. Now this is what I'm talking about. You see that crystallation? Is that even a word, crystallation? I'm gonna use half of the chocolate bar in the actual mixture and then the other half I'm gonna cut up as well for the topping. Next, my spice mixture. Since it's hot cocoa, the majority of the mix is going to be cocoa, cocoa powder. powder. The reason I use hot cocoa powder is just because it's simple. Maybe 10 p.m., you just throw it together and by 10.01, you're the happiest man in the world. A pinch of salt and we're using the whole thing of azúcar. Sugar, for my Spanish viewers. I'm learning Spanish. Cinnamon is my go-to in all things, so I'm gonna do a pretty hefty dash of cinnamon here. Next is nutmeg. nutmeg. I don't know what it adds, but you can tell when it's gone. It's like a best friend. Time for some cloves. Just like a small little pinch here. Allspice. It's like a bouquet in your nose hairs. And that's it. My cocoa mix is done. And there you have it. My chocolate for my Mexican hot chocolate. I ain't gonna lie to you people, this smells like Christmas. It's time for some milk. We're gonna be using whole milk. Funny story, I'm actually lactose intolerant. But now for a little treat, I treat myself to the whole milk. I'll deal with the consequences later. <laughs> Today I'm using a mixture of whole milk and heavy cream. I've used just milk before and that's fine, but I find that if you add a little bit of heavy cream, it really does bring a more velvety mouthfeel and richness to the hot chocolate. Today we're making almond milk. Oh! He's making his own almond milk? He's gonna add the nutty flavor to the hot chocolate and also it's gonna make it not so dense. I'm gonna need four cups of water. Now you're gonna dump the almonds and we're gonna let it sit for 12 hours. That's right, 12 hours. I'm using whole milk just because it's a little bit fattier. While this is warming up, I've got heavy cream. I'm not gonna use all of it, I don't think. I'm probably gonna go with half a cup. It's been 12 hours, so we're just gonna strain it right here. The almonds, they kind of got a little bit more fluffy. I want a rich hot chocolate, especially if I'm mixing alcohol in it, which is gonna cut through the fat anyway. I want something that's a little more bold to take away from the fact that I will inevitably probably be getting, getting drunk. Now it's time to blend our almonds. I'm gonna use uh, hot water, no boiling water, hot water. Hot like this, this kind of hot. The reason why we use hot water is because the water is gonna make the almonds more creamier and I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and agave. Agave is gonna give the, the sweetness that we're looking for. There we go. That's the color that we're looking for. So now we're gonna strain the almond milk. It smells like almond heaven. And there you have it, homemade almond milk. Let's start putting things together. So into the saucepan, I'm going to add my spice mixture. I'm making a traditional a Mexican hot chocolate, and we're using a traditional pot, a traditional whisk, and a traditional Mexican. The Molinillo, it's, a, it's an Aztec whisk. The reason why it has those little rings is because it's gonna help prevent the chocolate to stick to the bottom. So basically, I'm gonna put it right here and kind of do this with the chocolate. My secret ingredient, arrowroot powder. It thickens things up, so I wanna do this little by little, sort of scooping a bit of the hot chocolate into this first. This is what we need add the corn flour to the liquid. And the reason why I do it on the side because I want it to be nice and smooth. To start breaking up the chunks and starting the thickening process before re-adding this into the saucepan. So once I see that all the arrowroot powder is absorbed, this goes back into the saucepan and that's just gonna help thicken it up a little bit more without adding any extra crazy flavor. We're gonna add this to the pot and we're gonna add cinnamon. And then we grab the vanilla extract. Sometimes you could be like, oh, I feel like this is missing something. It's vanilla extract. And of course, the chocolate. 
I'm literally just gonna add the entirety of what I chopped up before and start whisking away. And keep doing this until the uh, hot chocolate is kind of almost boiling. I don't know why my sister does this. Yeah, I'm getting a muscle cramp. Consistency is exactly what I'm looking for. Like a thick hot chocolate. And it smells amazing. It smells like Mexican Christmas. I think this is looking pretty good. So this looks great, but you know what's gonna make it a little better? Booze. So first things first, to the shaker, I'm gonna add some ice. I've got vodka, got some Kahlua, Bailey's Irish cream in here. I'm going to add my hot chocolate. Okay, all that's left to do is shake it up, and it is ready to be poured. And now it's churro time. All right, so basically making churros, it sounds complicated, but it's not. Let's talk toppings, baby. So I got a lot of toppings, all empty calories, by the way. So we got the caramel, festive sprinkles, we got some chocolate chips, we got some Ready Whip, and then we got a chocolate wafer straw that we're gonna sneak in. My hot chocolate is sort of s'mores inspired. Now, I'm opting for graham crackers and marshmallows as my garnish, my embellishment, on top of some homemade whipped cream. So I'm gonna make my whipped cream by hand. Daniel's always trying to show me up. So let's make some churros, cold water. We have butter, we're gonna add a little bit of salt and sugar and we're just gonna stir until everything combines together. We're going to dump the flour at once. We don't want to boil the water. If the water is boiling, we're gonna have big crumbles of flour. So you wanna mix it until it's smooth. All right, let's make some whipped cream. First thing, cold bowl. You don't think it matters, but it really does. It helps with keeping everything together, and if you use a warm bowl, I find that it's harder to get those stiff peaks. To the cold bowl, I'm going to add some heavy cream and powdered sugar. I am already tired. I do not whip my own whipped cream. It gives me muscle spasms. Now, the dough, it's very important that we have to make sure we lower the temperature. We don't want to scramble eggs. This is no breakfast. Just mix it. Make sure you get some air there so it cools a little bit. Is making your own whipped cream by hand necessary, like without an electric mixer? No. But the pride you feel when it's done, you can't, you can't beat that, you know? I'm gonna stop here. I don't think it needs to be any thicker. And now I'm gonna add the eggs, one by one. All right, let's add some uh, vanilla. Ardo looks good. I think it's just perfect consistency. It's holding on to the whisk. The homemade whipped cream is done. All right, my churro dough is ready. Now it's time to fry some churros. To fry our churros, I'm gonna use canola oil. Should be at 375, 370 to have a nice golden crispy churros. We wanna make sure we keep our scissors on water because that's how we're gonna cut our churros. Otherwise they will stick. So let's make one. Now you stop, you cut it, okay. See, and that's how you do an S, <laughs> like Saul. Now I'm gonna do another one. Oh, that looks delicious. And I will say you cook it for like maybe two to three minutes. You can't have a s'mores inspired cocktail without toasted marshmallows. So I'm a vegetarian, so no marshmallows for me. <laughs> it's a lifestyle, people. I'm looking for nice gold consistency. How do you know the churros are done? When you don't see that many bubbles. Okay, I don't see a lot of bubbles anymore. I'm gonna put it right here. We're gonna mix some sugar and cinnamon for our churros. As soon as they come out of the fryer, you're gonna toss them in here so the sugar will stick to the churro. For now, all I'm doing is breaking up the graham crackers. And I don't really need much of the powder. My graham cracker garnish, it's gonna crush that. And then this one, you get to put in your pocket and take home because you've earned it. I melt some chocolate, and I took some of the almonds from my almond milk, start with the S. I just wanna eat it. Oh my gosh. And there we go, look how pretty that looks. As I'm doing this, I'm like salivating, salivating. Oh! Delicious. Amazing. So first, I'm going to skewer a couple marshmallows and toast them to Ideally, the perfect golden brownness, but I will say, admittedly, I do like a little bit of a burnt marshmallow. Toasty little beauties. Time to put it all together. Let's pour ourselves some hot chocolate. Be careful. Ooh, so good. And for whipped cream, oh no, messing this up royally. Let's hide the message beneath. That looks pretty cute. We're gonna put a little bit of this. Caramel, 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 one of those two. I'm scared to put these chocolate nibs. Trust the process. Next, I'm gonna throw out my little torched marshmallows right front and center. And the churro. And then I'm gonna sneak a chocolate wafer in the side. Architecture. After that, graham crackers. 
because it's s'mores, duh. Take a nice little cinnamon, but just to make it look pretty. Some sprinkles. A little bit of the dark chocolate, because, you know, chocolate on chocolate is just better. And then a little bit of the graham cracker powder. And voila, there you have it. This is the most over the top hot chocolate ever. And this is my hot chocolate. It looks very festive. I can't wait to try it. And this is my hot chocolate. This looks damn good. I'm stoked to slug this. And this is my Mexican hot chocolate, AKA champurrado. Cheers. Mm. Delicious. Oh yeah. It's good. The hint of nutmeg. Steven, you've done it again. It's delicious. I think my sister would be proud of me. It's delicious. The best part about this is that you're not just getting chocolate flavor. You can taste the cinnamon, and then all the little fixings, like the dark chocolate topping, it's a nice ode to s'mores. You can taste that there's booze in there, but it's not like there's booze in here. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not gonna rock you, but it'll set you up for a nice holiday for sure. It's really good. That's it, no more milk for me. I'm on milk from now on. I'm at home right now in Mexico. I'm here, but I'm not here. And this churro just makes this better. Hot chocolate is a wonderful treat with lots of options for making it. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. Steven made his hot chocolate with whole milk. Whole milk is about 3.5% milk fat, which makes it nice and opaque and slightly creamy. Daniel used a combination of whole milk and heavy cream. Heavy cream is approximately 38% milk fat and called heavy because it's very high in milk fat content. Heavy cream has an extravagant richness without feeling greasy or oily. This is due to milk fat globules, which are too small to detect in our mouth, but tend to coalesce, making cream very smooth and viscous. Saul made his own almond milk. This is a plant-forward milk made from the water extraction of soaked ground almonds. Steven used cocoa powder for his hot chocolate. Cocoa powder is made from cacao beans, specifically the cocoa nibs, which are roasted cacao beans with the outer fibrous hull removed. Removing the cocoa butter from the nibs leaves a solid mass, which is then pulverized into powder. Daniel used a combination of cocoa powder and melted dark chocolate, which has a range of compositions, but is essentially cocoa solids, cocoa butter, and some sugar. When you see a percentage on chocolate, it's telling you the amount of cocoa solids and cocoa butter in the product by weight. The remaining percentage is mostly sugar, perhaps some added lecithin and vanilla, and some added milk or milk powder. Saul used Ibarra chocolate bars. This is special Mexican chocolate made from roasted cocoa nibs, sugar, and cinnamon. It's slightly gritty from sugar granules, which also act as a type of scaffolding to stabilize the chocolate crystals. The resulting chocolate melts like a dream, which is why it's traditionally used for hot chocolate. Saul mixed his hot chocolate with a special traditional tool called a molinillo, which is small wooden spindle of sorts, used to whisk the chocolate with the milk, making it slightly foamy and frothy. For a topping, Stephen added nutmeg, an assertive spice which gets much of its flavor from the compound meristicin. This is a psychoactive compound that in high doses can block the action of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which causes some nerves in the digestive tract to stop working. Daniel added alcohol. When alcohol is shaken over ice, it introduces water and air, making it slightly less potent, allowing some flavor molecules to oxidize and impart interesting flavors. Saul topped his hot chocolate with delicious churros. He cooked the water, butter, and sugar together in a saucepan and then added all of the flour at once and cooked it, partially gelatinizing the flour starch. Eggs were incorporated when the flour mass cooled. This added soluble globular albumin proteins for structure and also enough water to form steam, which leavened the churros and made them slightly hollow, light, and airy inside. The frying quickly dehydrated the outside, giving the churros a crispy outer texture. Hot chocolate is a truly sumptuous beverage and not just during the cold winter months. Next time you're making this sweet, dark, and decadent beverage, we hope you'll take some tips from our three talented chefs.